Hey guys, Makeup Mobster here. Today, we're gonna do a DIY video. Oh yeah! So I'm gonna show you guys what, what we're gonna do today. Okay, if you guys follow my live streams, then you know that we just got a new roof put on our house, okay? Our roof, when we moved in, was about 20-something years old. And so we had a new roof put on our house. My house used to be this really ugly forest green color. Ugh. If I can find some old pictures, I'll insert them. Okay, so this picture is old, old. I mean, we've cut the trees down and changed a few things as far as the front yard goes, but you guys get the point. The house had a brown roof and green shutters. It was ugly. This picture actually shows it a little bit better, but um, yeah, we cut those two trees down. I don't know who plants a tree right in front of a house, but those two trees that you see um, in the foreground and the one that's right up against the house, those are gone. And uh, so we replaced all the trim and everything's now gray. And so this is what the house looks like now. You know, we got the brand new roof, everything's gray, gray shutters, everything to match. And so it just looks a little bit more updated. Plus we got all the green trim taken out and all the, um, whatever was green was replaced with gray. So as you guys could see, the house used to be kind of ugly and a little bit dated looking, but I'll show you guys the front of the house and what it looks like now. Okay guys, so this is the updated uh, house. Obviously, it looks so weird without the shutters. Uh, I ordered the more modern looking shutters. Don't mind, I have the garage door open uh, and my landscaper hasn't been here yet today. And I still have some of my 4th of July decorations up there. Those are not permanent. But you guys get the picture. Once we get the gables, uh, the circle, that, that little circle thing there updated. And get the shutters. I'll show you guys an after picture. But as of right now, uh, this is what the house looks like. And so, I wanted to paint my front door. But my footage got messed up. I think I ended it before I finished talking. So, sorry about that. Okay, so let me explain exactly what it is that I... I'm going to be doing here, right? Um, I'll show you guys some of the inspiration that I saw on Pinterest. What I want to do is I basically want to make the door look like a washed kind of wood look. Uh, most of the projects... <laughs> door, dude. Really, Snare? Really? Okay. So most of the projects that I've seen, um, most of the inspiration that I saw were doors that were painted, ooh, doors that were painted a dark brown uh, wood effect. And so that's what I'm going to be going for. But I'm gonna be using a gray paint instead. I wanna do a gray washed look. If I don't like it, I can always change it. That's the great thing about paint is that we can just paint right over it. So let me show you guys some of the supplies that I'll be using and then we'll get started. I bought this Rust-Oleum door paint from, I believe I got this at Lowe's. I had originally bought another Rust-Oleum paint. My door is metal, so a great way, obviously, to test whether your door is metal or not metal is to grab a magnet. Um, so I got a magnet here and as you guys can see, of course the landscapers are here. Why wouldn't they be? Hi. So I'm gonna have to close the front door. But as you guys can see, I have a magnet and the door is metal, is made of metal. I bought this Rust-Oleum door paint, um, which says it is uniquely formulated for metal, wood, and doors. I just bought white, um, nothing crazy, no color, because I just wanted to lay down a coat of white. Because as you guys can see, my door has some uh, chipping on it. You know, some of the paint, the old paint had chipped off. Uh, I also bought a high density foam roller. These are really good for uh, doors and cabinets and surfaces like, you know, like that, where you want a really good, nice, thick, um, even coat of paint. They're not going to leave any brush marks or anything like that. So uh, if you're doing a project like this, I would definitely suggest using the high density foam roller. Okay. So here's where the effect is going to come into play. I bought this Verithene gel stain, okay? It says from wood, metal, and fiberglass. You can use it on a variety of different surfaces. Um, and to make the wood effect, purchase these cheap, um, they're called chip brushes, okay? And basically what these are, um, you guys can see the bristles are not as densely packed as they would be on a regular brush. And so that'll kind of give it a little bit of texture. The next thing you will need is a small 
sanding block. I bought this one. Uh, I bought 220 extra fine. You just want to kind of scratch the surface a little bit just to give it a little bit of grip. Something for the paint to adhere to. So we'll, we'll be using this. And um, I also bought these tack cloths. Basically what these are is it's like a cheesecloth with this kind of wax coating on it. And you kind of just go over it. It'll pick up all the little grain that's left behind. And the last thing that you'll need is some rubber gloves. Because bitch, I don't want to mess my manicure up. Mm, I spent time on that. All right, so let's get to work. I washed the door off the other day with um, a, a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser is a great thing. If you have walls that have a gloss finish on them, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser will remove everything, you know, that's there. Scuff marks or whatever. Let me just grab my hook off of here. Wow, I thought these things were supposed to come off easy. What, what's going on here, 3 them? And of course, I scratch the door. So I'm just gonna take this little wood sanding block and just start sanding the door. So I'm just gonna lightly sand the door. And I sped this footage up and muted it because nobody wants to hear that sound. To be honest with you guys, I don't know how necessary this step is. I listen to the guy at Home Depot half the time. They don't even know what they're talking about. I'm sure it helps. I'm convinced it helps. But anyway, just finish sanding the door lightly. You don't got to go crazy about this. Okay, so I got some of this paper. Um, this is just to obviously protect my floors. So I'm going to lay this down just, you know, where the door is so that we don't get any paint on the floor because that wouldn't be good. Okay, so I cut two lengths of this tape and I'm just, uh, tape, of this paper and I'm gonna just lay that down. Where's my little hockey puck door stopper? See, it's a good thing when your son plays hockey. That should stop the door from swinging while I'm working on it. And uh, if you have a door stopper, you probably want to use that. So I'm just gonna tape this down just so we could make sure it doesn't go anywhere while we're working. <clears throat> kind of high traffic area. And there's soup hair everywhere. Of course, I just vacuumed. I really need to get my floors refinished. That's a project for the future. And we good! So I am going to put on my gloves so we don't want to mess up our little manicure. I probably should put crappy clothes on, but you know, why would I do such a thing? Let me just ruin my clothes. I'm a very messy painter. He's a fan right now, girl. It is hot in the building. Well, huh. So it seems my husband took my little paint can opener tool. So I'm gonna use this little, little baby screwdriver. I'm just gonna kind of mix it around like this. Um, I don't wanna shake it because it's gonna get a bunch of air bubbles in it. So I'm just kind of, giving it the old spin, and I'm gonna open it up, but I'm gonna do that down here and you guys aren't gonna see it too. We go, we got uh, a little white paint. Woo, this stuff's strong. Okay. All right, so grab uh, your handy dandy wood stirrer, and you just wanna mix that around a little bit. You guys are sensitive to fumes. Definitely uh, wear a protective mask. We all have them now, right? I'm gonna start with the brush cutting in around the window. Um, and then I will go back in with the roller. So I am going to pour a little bit of this in. Make sure your tray is clean. And um, just a little amount. Um, and a great way to prevent drip marks is to just kind of go like that with the brush just to clean that up. Um, and I only poured a little amount. That's all you need. You just kind of want to work in small amounts with paint. I'll show you guys a little trick when it comes to cutting in. Sorry, I just cut in a line because I thought it was friggin' recording. But it wasn't. What I do is I get a little bit, um, I prefer to have an angled brush, okay? And when you're painting, what you do is you start a little bit away from the edge. And then you kind of just drag this little roll of paint up. Okay, and you see how I have my brush angled where the bulk of it is down here. I don't know if you guys can really see that. And so when you want to cut in with a straight line, you're really only using these front bristles here. And so I work in small strokes. Um, you don't want to just cut across like that. So I'm just kind of starting a little bit away. Um, in this case, I don't really care because I'm probably going to uh, paint this molding, but I need a smaller brush, so we'll come back and do that later. 
uh, you just kind of want to start away and, you know, hold your brush on a little bit of an angle and you'll get a nice straight line. There's no need for tape. And I just continued to cut in around the window until I was happy with the way it came out. Uh, yeah, that's that. So this is an oil-based paint, so it's very thick and it's very sticky. Paint these little squares too with the brush just so we can make sure we get in there um, and fill in all the little cracks, okay? Because the roller is not going to work on this area that's kind of recessed. So you just want to continue cutting in on the areas that kind of fall back that the roller can't get. Now, I don't mind it being thick. Always make sure you look out for drips or anything like that. You don't want to have drips all over your, your door because that ain't going to look good, which I just had one right there. Um, the, you know, drips usually happen in the corner where the paint kind of pulls up. So you just kind of want to thin those areas out, especially on the bottom there. And so you want to kind of just continue filling in those sections, smoothing everything out, looking for drips, making sure that you don't have any because that's not a good look. And you just want to work in small sections. So now I tried to lay on this uh, first coat kind of thick because I really didn't want to do another one. This paint, no kidding, was really hard to work with. It was very thick. Um, and it dried very quickly. So, you know, kind of while you were painting it, it your brush kind of got hung up in it. So, so I really just wanted to lay down one coat. And now you guys are going to see what not to okay. do while painting. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Be careful. Almost just kicked the whole can of paint over. <gasps> oh, my God, I did. <gasps> Mother, it's all over. Do you guys see that? Let me show you guys what happened here. Now oh, it dripped out the door here. <laughs> what the is out there? All over my deck. My husband just painted the deck, so this is great. He's gonna love this. But I got the paint. We could touch it up. Not the end of the world. Let's uh, continue on, shall we? Okay, so the next thing I did was I just began to cut in around the hardware. Now, you could totally remove the hardware if you wanted to. I don't know why. I cut in around it, and then when I uh, later on did this special effects paint, I basically removed it to make it a little bit easier. So um, I kind of gave myself a little bit extra work here, but either way, you know, you could do however you want, whatever's easier for you. Going now with the roller and start working that around. So you wanna get a nice even coat on the roller. Okay, I started using the roller and as I was painting, I started to notice that the paint was kind of bubbling up and leaving these weird air bubbles that weren't really popping. And I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, so for some reason, uh, it looks like the roller is leaving these little air bubbles. If you guys could see those. And I'm not too crazy about that. So. Uh, I think I'm just going to continue brushing this on. Okay, so I just continued putting it on with the brush. And once I did that, all those little air bubbles disappeared. Normally, I've painted cabinets and doors before. And I've used those high-density rollers. And they've worked phenomenally. Uh, something about this paint, which I was just not crazy about this paint at all. It was just very hard to work with. It was very thick. It was very sticky. It dried too quickly. And it was just not my favorite paint. I'm sure there's other door paints out there. Um, and so I will try to find one and put a link in the description. Also, I just wanted to note, um, you guys, I put down a white base coat because I was using gray over it and that was the look I was going for. If you guys are using a brown paint or something like that, you might want to use um, a beige base coat or something to that effect, a yellow, a beige just something a little bit lighter than the gel stain. This gel stain comes in many different colors, and as you guys will see, uh, it's it's very weird, but it's translucent kind of, and you know you can thin it out. So you want to put something a little bit lighter than the color that you're using on top in the gel stain. So I just wanted to make note of that. Um, so I just basically continued brushing this on until I got the whole first coat on. I know we're like probably 10 minutes into the video, and I still haven't gotten anything done. Welcome to my world. 
Okay, so basically what I'm going to show you guys next is what happened when I was done painting. I'm just kind of showing you guys that this paint, I really didn't like. I think I have to reiterate that. It left this texture, lots of drip marks, lots of texture. Now, in this case, it might actually work in our favor because I'm trying to make the door kind of look like wood and make it look aged. But if you're just painting your door a solid color, do not use this Rust-Oleum paint. I just wanted to warn you guys. Uh, the finish was uneven. Everything about it sucked. Okay, I just want to show you guys a little tip. Plastic bags are very handy to have when you're painting. Um, what I like to do, and this is a good tip if you're, you know, painting your walls or any type of house paint, you could take this, okay, um, and put it in a plastic bag and you could roll the plastic bag around it and come back to it later. Um, if you want to do that to save it, uh, you roll it in the paint a little bit on the tray, you know, get a nice coating and just kind of stuff it in the bag and roll the bag around it and it'll keep it nice and wet. Little painter's tip there. Another uh, tip I have is to prevent splatter when you are um, resealing the can. You put a little plastic bag over it, make sure there's no holes or gaps anywhere. Um, and then, boom. Okay, make sure you just hammer that all around. And there you go. You know, no splatter, so. Okay, so all the paint dried overnight, and as you guys could see, I'm just prepping my work area. This time I'm using a plastic drop cloth because we saw what happened there with the paper and the paint getting everywhere. And so I am just gonna prep that, and the next step is going to be to tape off the door. Okay, so just to explain here, I'm trying to make my door look like it's made out of wood. So I found a picture of a door that was kind of similar to mine that is made out of wood just to see the way that the boards would be laid out. So I'm going to lay the tape down in different sections of the door to make it look like there's actually wood panels on each uh, piece of the door. So the next step was for me to start taping off sections of the door. I was going to work in small sections panel by panel. So I started taping off the center panel of the door and then I was going to work my way out. But I realized that I had taped it the wrong way in the middle. So I basically just turned the piece of tape the other way. So it is now time to open up our gel stain and that I did and I'm going to show you guys that it has a very thick texture, very hard to mix. Uh, it's literally almost like a solid gel, hence the name gel stain. And now it's time to see how this stuff goes on. Okay, so as you guys can see, it kind of goes on pretty solid and opaque, but as you spread it around, it kind of thins out. And then I grabbed that clean chip brush that I showed you guys earlier in the video and I just kind of dragged that through the paint to kind of give me that wood green effect. As you guys can see, it's kind of removing some of the paint. So this stuff does not dry quickly at all. So you could really play around with it and move it around. And so that's what I continued to do. I just kept kind of moving it around until it looked how I wanted it to look. Okay, and in this next clip, as you guys can see, I started working on the accent panels, just laying down the base, you know, coat of this paint. And then, of course, I will, I'm going to go back in with my chip brush. Now, if you want to get really detailed, you could tape off the corners and, you know, <laughs> get crazy with the tape. I didn't feel like doing that. Again, you know, it doesn't have to look perfect. We're just trying to give off the effect that the door is made of wood. So I just kind of went by hand. If the panel goes vertical, then I painted my brush strokes up and down. If the panel goes horizontal, I paint my brush strokes right to right. And I was pretty happy with the result. I don't feel like there's any need to, you know, go crazy with the tape or anything here. But if you really want to, you could tape off the corners and and the border and whatnot, so it's nice and neat. But as you guys could see, I'm kind of getting the result that I'm looking for. I went back in with the chip brush. This paint is extremely workable, meaning that it doesn't dry for a really long time. So even if you mess up and you get some in an area that you're not working in yet, you could easily just take a rag or a paper towel and just wipe it right off. I mean, that's how easy it is. 
and it'll come off and then you just start over again. So um, it moves around for quite a long period of time, which is nice while you're working with it, but not while you're waiting for it to dry. So uh, just something to keep in mind while using this gel stain on a surface like this. A few more things I just want to mention. One is that uh, with the chip brush, I had a rag, like a t-shirt rag, handy. Uh, and every time, you know, I would use it, I would wipe it off on the rag. I don't know if I really showed that in the video, but I was just kind of wiping off the excess paint on the rag. So basically what I was doing was I would put it on with one brush, you know, and then I would take the chip brush, I would clean it off on the rag, and then I would drag it horizontally or vertically, depending on where I was going. And, um, you know, I would clean it off every once in a while because we kind of want it to remove some of the paint so that it leaves those lines and reveals the color underneath. So that was one tip. The other tip with this paint is that, and, and the other good thing about this paint is that you could add extra. So if you're, you know, still working and you wanna darken up certain areas, all you do is just, again, put your brush stroke in and, you know, you could just add a little bit more paint and then go back over it with the chip brush. I mean, you could literally play with this stuff all day. I kept going over areas. If there was a part that I didn't like, you know, I would just keep going over it. So this paint is pretty much foolproof. I mean, you can't really mess up while you're using it. And so I just continued to work. Now you guys see me taping off the bottom portion of the door again. I want to make it look like there's separate planks of wood. And so where I'm putting that tape, it's going to create this line, you know, that's going to be a distinct line to make it look as if it's a separate piece of wood going in a different direction from the piece above it. And as you guys can see, I just kind of continued doing the same thing, filling it all in with my brush. And then I actually bought a smaller chip brush this time to go back into those corners and kind of get the detail a little bit better. As you can see, I zoomed in up here so I could show you guys closer up what I was doing. So I hope you guys can now see a little bit closer up and get a better idea of exactly what I was doing. I was kind of trying to concentrate the paint in the corners, kind of let it collect there a little bit more so that it was darker. And then in the center, I would remove the paint. So if you got, you know, you see me going back in, I'm wiping around the edges with a rag just so that I don't have too much uh, paint pulling up on the outside of this little indentation area. But I just kept kind of going back in and working with this stuff. Again, it was really easy to work with. You could keep moving it around and playing around with it. I was here you guys see me trying to make the middle a little bit lighter and I was trying to kind of focus the darker areas out on the edges of each board, if that makes sense, and then make the middle a little lighter so that it kind of pops out at you. So, um, you know, I just kept working with it until I was satisfied with the result. Okay, and then next it was time for me to tape off the sides. It was a little bit difficult up by that window because the window stuck out a little further than those recessed areas. So it was a little difficult for me to tape off. And of course, I could only put tape in the area where there was no paint because I had to wait for the paint to dry. So it took me, uh, I think it was three days to complete the entire project because I had to wait for the paint to fully dry before I could tape off those areas. So I did what I could this day, which was all the vertical panels on the sides. And then I had to wait for the paint to dry the next day or maybe even the day after. I believe I waited for it to fully cure because this stuff takes a really long time to dry. Uh, so I had to wait, but I just basically did the same thing that you guys saw me do on the rest of it. I laid it down and then I went back in. The side light area was a little, the side panels were a little bit more difficult because I had to do really, really long brush strokes. And again, I just want to reiterate, um, <clears throat> near the areas where it was taped off, I tried to make the paint a little bit darker in those areas. And I tried to you know, concentrate my brush strokes down the center so that it was a little bit lighter than the edges. Just to note, I did end up removing the hardware because it made it a little easy. So once I finished up with both of the side panels, I peeled the tape off and I basically called it a night after that. And it was time for me to just wait for those areas to dry so I could do the window and the middle panel that runs horizontally. So it's now the next day, and as you guys could see, I am basically taping off the opposite side. 
Now, I just want to tell you guys, I was really scared that this paint was not going to dry overnight. I'm not sure if this was the next day or the day after that. Uh, the, t the paint took an extremely long time to dry. I remember it was really humid out that day when I was doing this. And when I went to go touch the door later that night, I mean, it was still extremely wet. So you really got to let this stuff dry before you start applying tape to it. Uh, in order to kind of speed up the drying, since it was so humid out, I used a fan and just kind of kept that pointed on it all night until I had to close my door for the night, which thank God I stay up late. And please don't ask me what I was thinking wearing those shorts. Once I got everything taped up and it was good to go, I started to apply the paint. Uh, I did it really close up here so you guys could see. And there's my son. He was home this day. So it was a little hard to film because he kept messing with the camera. Anyway, so you guys could see here I am removing some of the paint with the chip brush. Now, I don't know why I was having a little bit of trouble on the right side of this panel. As you guys could see, I'm wiping all the paint off because I was having a little bit of trouble. The paint, for some reason, was not sticking, even though I was trying to build it up in the areas closest to the tape. So I'm not really sure what was going on there. I don't know if there was some oils or something that were sticking, but the paint was just acting funky in that one area. I can't really explain why. Maybe I didn't sand well over there. I'm not sure. But... um. Either way, you know, I just had to keep going back in, adding more paint, and then reworking it with the chip brush. I had several chip brushes just to let you guys know. This way, you know, I could keep using clean ones because once they dry up the next day, you just throw them out. They're really cheap. Okay, so when I was done with that and pretty much satisfied, I moved on to the little area below the window. One of the things I forgot to mention here is the chip brushes are kind of a pain in the ass. I know this is sped up, so it's kind of hard to see exactly what's going on. But if I would have let you guys watch this in its full length, it would have been a three-hour video uh, <laughs> or more. So uh, the, the hairs would fall out of the chip brush every once in a while. So I would have to like pick them out. It's the only disadvantage to using them. Uh, so it was a little annoying at times because you would pick it out and then you would move all the paint and then you would have to then go ahead and retouch up that area. And so now it was time to do the very top area of the door. Now this area was a little bit tricky because of the window and the window being curved. It was really hard to make the lines go horizontal and make it look really realistic looking because it was kind of hard to get the brush in. As you guys could see, it kind of overlapped. So I really had to work at this area for quite a bit to get it to look right. Uh, I kept messing up and the Lines would be going a little bit kind of vertical, so I would, you know, then wipe it down and add more paint and then remove it. And it was, you know, a little bit tricky, but I am happy with the final result. You know, at the end of the day, this stuff doesn't need to look perfect from far away. It's kind of like a Monet picture. You kind of look at it from far away and you really look at the whole entire picture, not the little sections in and of themselves. I mean, I could have probably sat there and made it look perfect, uh, but I was happy with the result in the end, which I am going to show you guys in a minute. So lastly, but not least, was the window. I at first was thinking of just kind of painting it white and doing a white trim, but ultimately I decided that I wanted to finish the effect on the window. So the really tricky part was that I had to tape the window up so I didn't get the paint all over the glass. And so you guys could see that I had to sit there with uh, an X-Acto knife and trim out the areas of the window because obviously the tape isn't perfect. So to do a window that's curved, what you want to do is work in really small sections. So as you guys can see, I'm ripping off really tiny little pieces of tape and I'm overlapping them and just kind of following the curve. I know it's very meticulous and it's kind of a pain in the butt, but worth it in the end when you don't have paint all over your glass. So I just continued filling up until I was done with you know, the whole entire area. Okay, so once I got all the windows taped up and ready to go, I once again started to paint. I did the same exact thing here that I did everywhere else. I basically just kept going over 
the paint, you know, I painted everything in and then I would go back in with the chip brush and then fill it all in. This area was a little bit difficult just because the molding is curved. And so, you know, you have to make sure that you get it on all angles and the sides and everything like that. And so I just can continued on doing the same thing that I did everywhere else. It definitely helps to have a smaller chip brush. So they sell those at Home Depot. Again, they're really, really cheap. So I just, you know, kept going around, uh, moving the paint around until I was happy with the final result. All in all, I think this paint was pretty easy to work with. I think it was uh, gave me a good effect. And if you want to make it darker, I'm sure you could put a second coat on or you could use another color like a black stain or something just to add some variation. Just keep in mind that once this stuff dries, it dries a little bit darker. So uh, it did look a little less contrasty in person. Right now I have my ring light pointed at it. So it's making the contrast look really severe. So now it's time for the final result. And so this is the final result. I am really happy with the way that it turned out. I think it gives my house a little bit more interest. Uh, it's really hard to see when we have our storm door closed. Sorry about that. Uh, as you guys will see in a minute, I opened up the door so that you guys could see what it looks like on the exterior. Uh, I think it looks really nice. Gives it a nice modern washed look. And I'm really, really happy with the way that it came out. And it is held up really nice. And hey, I saved a ton of money by doing it myself. If you guys would like to see more of these types of videos from me, don't forget to hit the like button and give me a subscribe and hit the bell. I'll see you guys later. Bye.